Not bad. Cool to see how it all started. <laughs> Star Wars. Hey guys, this is my review for Iron Man. Now admittedly, if I thought about watching all the MCU movies before Endgame, I really should have done this earlier. However, I realized that I've actually reviewed already half of the movie, so I just need to review the first half. So we're starting off with Iron Man, the movie that started it all. I actually did a video talking about how this movie turned 10 years old last year, and admittedly it's quite impressive to see how some of the things still stand up in the film and how some things have obviously moved on. More so the grounded in reality sort of aspects of this. Obviously there is some comic book elements, but I guess just how modern-ish Tony Stark's outfit is in this movie, it's not obviously possible, but it's the most believable version, considering this is made up of gyros and robot parts and everything that you could almost kind of get your head around in terms of a comic book slash real world movie and now he's running around with nanobots in Infinity War so they gradually jump the shark with that one. As his first role as Tony Stark you can definitely see the elements that Robert Downey Jr. has sort of tuned over the time. He's a little bit more humble now than he was then because he's cocky as hell in this movie but it's what made you like him and his interactions with other characters, Pepper Potts, Jeff Bridges, all these different people, even the terrorists that he gets kidnapped by, they're all pretty funny situations with him, even though some of them are not meant to be. What I did enjoy is how they humanized a lot of side characters, and I'm not talking about Pepper or Agent Coulson or whatnot, I'm meaning the people that he meets. For instance, the scene that's in the car at the very beginning of the film is still actually a pretty standout scene with all these soldiers wanting to take a photo of Tony Stark with the two afraid to, and then he kind of is like, hey, what's going on? And they're like, well, we would like to. It's like, oh, sure. It's a pretty nice interaction with just random characters, and I think that's maybe why this was the starting point for the MCU in terms of making these characters human, making them relatable with other people, not just other superheroes. Something that the DC movies have never gotten right, except maybe for Sajam. Obviously some things have not continued on, uh, including Terrence Howard, ha ha ha, the first guy to get recast from this movie. Wow, he was such a kiss ass in this film. I would definitely say Don Cheadle has done a lot better with the role. Instead of being a kiss ass like Terrence Howard was, and really making him his own, and kind of having him be able to talk back to Tony, like not taking Tony's shit. And it was cool to see Jarvis. I think what's so interesting about going back and watching these movies is just to see where these characters started, and now you can think of where they are now. Vision went from being an AI assistance computer to a fully living being. And it's interesting to see just something so minute, like Jarvis, just this AI, this voiceover role for Paul Bettany, turn into something physical. The effects don't hold up as much. You can see that they use some practical stuff, including just actually building an Iron Man suit. It was something they apparently don't even bother doing really anymore now. So it was cool to see that. But admittedly, like I said, the effects have not aged the best. And Jeff Bridges' role has kind of gotten a little bit more dated now. The guy who plays the terrorist leader in this movie is horrible. But I think it's for a reason, because he's basically playing the complete stereotype. I believe that's something that was intentional in this film, is that it was kind of a play on the ridiculous, the ridiculous portrayal of terrorism in that film. And the film was kind of the age, and just going back all the way to the 90s. Some parts of it hold up some parts don't and admittedly that is obviously just an age of time and of limited budget but now that the MCU has billion dollar money movie back behind it it's never going to not look great but in the end really it stands up not just for being the one that started it all but for being the one that really held the precedent in terms of all four movies that were the starter films of the MCU this is the one that style stuck and people followed 
for a majority of the MCU movies so far. In the end, I'm going to give Iron Man a 5 out of 7. I did enjoy it. I do feel that it stands up and it is a placeholder film in this series. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I'm going to try and zip through the rest as quickly as possible. Anyways, let me know what you guys think and I'll see you guys next time for the next review. Thanks for watching the video. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. <sniffs> By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural. Or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. <sniffs> hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> to see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.